<laughs> Extraterrestrials. Extraterrestrials. How do you pronounce that? Terrestrials. Extra terrestrial. Extra terrestrials. <laughs> anyway. The vastness of the universe, with planets being light years away, it is logical to believe there is life on other planets right now, or extraterrestrials, intelligent life on other planets. The Bible, or the Word of God, seems to allow for some of this belief. You must get the right time period, like <laughs> before Adam. So let's think about some things. The pre-Adam time, Earth created and made for who? Why evil or fallen angels wants mankind to believe in extraterrestrial beings and especially abductions. And then we have the pranks of man and inventions we may see yet know nothing about, unidentified objects. So I'll show you scriptures of evil spirits and what they can do. <laughs> now, pre-Adam, we can see the evidence of the Mesozoic era, another word to try to pronounce, dinosaurs and stuff. But we do not see any running around today. You must remember Adam had dominion, so there would not be any fleshly things far superior to man. Man, since Adam is only about 6,000 years old, according to the begotten scriptures in the Bible, <laughs> Scientists believe the age of the earth is in the billions. So what about before Adam? So now I want you to note the word replenish in the following verses because this is what they, uh, there's debates on this word replenish, but let me show you. So let's start in Genesis chapter nine, verse one, about Noah and looking at the word replenish again. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. <laughs> it is noticeably clear Noah and his family had to refill or replenish the earth because all of man was destroyed except Noah's family. Water covered the earth, but did not destroy the earth. Let's look at the same word replenish in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. It's the same word. Same Hebrew word, yes. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And God blessed them. <laughs> Adam and Eve. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and what? Replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. The word replenish, like in Noah's time, indicated life before Adam. There was some type of Mesozoic life where it could have gone from Cro-Magnum life to space ex exploration. I just do not believe that that life was so life that man has today or God would have to include that pre-man or Adam time as the beginning of man. So what artifacts or skeletal remains that could be yet deep in the earth or on another planet? Not discovered yet. <laughs> Look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Notice the first words. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Now, verse 6, whereby the, wor the world that then was being overflowed with water, it was overflowed with water, then the next word is perished. See that? This is for your study. Is this talking about Noah's time? Did the earth perish? Did all men die? No, there was Noah and his family, and the earth was covered but did not perish. The verse says they are willingly ignorant of this time <laughs> for your own study. Now, earth created and made for who? You think about the years and the vastness of the universe and think like the psalmist said, Psalms 8, chapter 4 and 6, 4 through 6, 
Verse 4. You think, what is man? That thou art mindful of him. Huh? <laughs> then, and the son of man, that thou visitest him. Verse 5. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Now that word angels in the Hebrew is Elohim. And has crowned him with glory and honor. The word Elohim in that word is the word for God. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. The word angel here is the word for Elohim, the word for God. A little lower than God. So then, therefore, there is no room for alien intelligence between God and man. God made the heavens and the earth for man to inhabit. Have you noticed that the things of the earth is relative to man? The wind generally does not blow us over. <laughs> the heat and cold we can stand. Fruits and vegetables are relative to our bite. The massive universe is to give a hint to the power of God and to, and to reflect his very bright light that we could not behold without evaporating. <laughs> so he put the sun back in place to reflect his light. So why does evil want, to, want us to believe in aliens from other planets, especially abductions? Because evil will have to convince or, or have an explanation when Jesus Christ comes in the clouds for the Christians, dead or alive. The people that are left behind will simply say, I'm glad to see those religious people get abducted. <laughs> they disappear into outer space. And that will be partially true. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And what? And the dead, dead in Christ shall rise first. That's very controversial if you, if you think about it. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. If they're already alive, why did they have to rise first? Okay, anyway. <laughs> What people, will, what people will make this trip? People who die and are alive believing in Jesus Christ and that God raised him from the dead, Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. Then it says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. That's why it's called the gathering together. Caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and, shows, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So you have those who believe in Jesus Christ who have died great 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 grandpa and those who are alive that believe in Jesus Christ I thought the ones that were there are floating in heaven aha aha <laughs> so listen so the ones who died Christ comes in the cloud it doesn't come all the way down to the earth that's why it's called the gathering together the ones in Christ start to rise up we that are alive will meet him and then go up into the heaven and meet the Lord in the air. And of course the unbelievers will call that an abduction. They won't see it. And by the way, I think this all happens in the blinking of an eye. So it's not going to, you're not going to see people float up. You just bing, don't gone. Next door neighbor's gone. <laughs> when this happens and no man knows when, what do you think the people left here on earth would think or would believe? These people would be atheists and Christ rejectors or other religions. Evil has to get this alien abduction believed. Now, so how about those that say we were abducted? They came back to tell they were like a rat in a test lab. <laughs> they even passed the lie detectors. Let me show you the power of fallen angels. In these scriptures, the man is in the tombs. In these scriptures, I'm talking about a man in the tombs. Something happened in this man's life to allow these fallen angels to take over him. He was living in tombs and wore no clothes. He also was cutting himself and crying. Jesus saw this man when he got off the boat. Now this is in Luke chapter 8, 28 through 30. When we saw Jesus, when he saw Jesus, excuse me, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, Most High? 
Now, who said that was those spirits that were leading him, that were possessing him. They said to him, I beseech thee, torment me not. Verse 29, for he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. That's what Jesus Christ did. For oftentimes it, those spirits, had caught him. See, they caught him. And he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. And this man, <laughs> he's got chains on him. They tried to keep him from cutting himself. And he was kept bound with chains and fetters. And he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Now, how do you think he did that? What power do you think helped him do that? Verse 30, and Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. You can see this record also in Mark chapter 5. This man got himself possessed, maybe based on his own beliefs. Those evil spirits caught him, drove him into the wilderness, and he had the strength to break chains and was cutting himself. Now, this is what these fallen angels are capable of doing when a man opens his minds up to certain lies and beliefs and who knows what trauma happened in that culture to him to set him up to, to be possessed. He just, they just can't just go around possessing people. I don't want you to have fear. It takes some crazy beliefs to get there. And maybe some drugs. Who knows what they had at that time. So now in Luke chapter 4, verse 9, this is what... The, this is what Jesus Christ allowed those guys to do. Verse 9, Luke 4, 9. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle. <laughs> set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. Look at that. I'm just talking about they put him on a pinnacle. You can go back and read the whole story. Luke chapter 4, 5 and 6. And the devil taking him, Jesus Christ, up into a high mountain, <laughs> showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. See that? Somehow they can get people to see things. But I think it takes other trauma and religious lies in their lives to give those evil spirits an open door. You can look here on YouTube under alien abductions and listen to what these people say. Hear them out. I didn't, use, I didn't need verse 6 in Luke 4, so that's okay. Again, look at you, look in, under YouTube under alien abductions. So, God loves man and it takes this whole universe and the processes to supply the needs of man, at the same time safeguard it while allowing man to have choice. So, <laughs> you wanna see the other planets? Hit your ride in salvation with Jesus Christ and see what God has in mind with the whole universe in everlasting life. We might get to pop around to certain planets, but today, I don't, in this time period after Adam, I don't think there's any room for extraterrestrials, a certain disciple.